Hi class, I hope you're enjoying this glorious weather after the rains. As some of you know, I have been on alert because some of you have talked about broken English as a way to refer to students who are emerging bilinguals or their parents who don't quite have full proficiency in standard conventional English, who may be missing some words in their diction or um, misusing grammar or dialect speakers of English. Um, and so I was thinking about this piece of fence. Our fence was broken and my daughter and I painted this extra piece and my husband helped to fix it. And I think of it as beautiful and that that's what we do with broken things. We fix them. But when we think about languages as being broken, we are making people and the languages they speak become objects and assuming that some people are fixed while others are broken. And without knowing it, we're causing more harm and maybe breaking some trust with those communities. Because to say that a parent speaks broken English is to say that that child is the son or daughter of someone who is broken, missing something, needs to be fixed. And we hear this kind of language all the time. We hear slang or street speech or sloppy English or um, African-American English, Spanglish, Hawaiian. Creole is often put into that category and sometimes people say ghetto. And all of this, I think, is uh, so that we don't say things about race and class. So those accusations of having an imperfect English are always targeted at communities who have less power, including southeastern varieties of English. So when we hear people talk about southern dialect and make fun of hillbilly English or redneck English, it's also not talking about what we think of as a more educated elite and higher status speaker who has affluence or who is more or less um, associated with the communities of, in power, white communities in our country context. Um, so we have to look out for those codes. This is what it means to be a student of language and education. It's what it means to be in this class of language and culture so that we break with the naive ways of labeling around us and we start to call the unquestioned, oh, there's mosquito, unquestioned assumptions into um, consideration for revisiting. And it's not just a language game. It's not just political correctness. The way we talk about people and languages and the speakers of those languages, I believe it really matters. And that's what we're doing in this classroom. And so if you read that short article by Walt Wolfram, who I hold in the highest regard, a uh, North Carolina scholar of applied linguistics, who's done a great deal to change the um, North Carolina curriculum and put the study of sociolinguistics into their middle school social studies state curriculum uh, standards. And I wish that we had that in Georgia. Um, I hope you'll consider in incorporating sociolinguistics and the study of language awareness and questioning assumptions into your own class. And my hope is that um, even if you do, uh, like most of us, let slip or think, oh, that person doesn't speak English, oh, they got to speak broken English, or um, that at least there's something in your uh, consciousness that says, where's that coming from? And why am, is it okay to disparage the way someone speaks? And would I change that if I could? What, what, what kind of consequence might that have? Even if the speakers of that dialect or variety of language themselves refer to it as broken. It's, it does, still doesn't justify the labeling. We are all uh, subject to the social, the societal attitudes around us. And so this class is about questioning that and trying to transform it and transform ourselves in the process. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you and your readings in the coming days and weeks.